Well, let's go back a little ways before we continue to the next story about what happens on the ark and when the ark lands <clears throat> and when uh, Noah and his family exit the ark. Let's go back to the creation because in the symbol of faith when we say uh, and without whom nothing was made that has been made that we're talking about Jesus Christ we're talking about God the Word as the one who made all things and in the creation narrative when we talk about the separation of light from darkness it, this has a very profound meaning to us that will echo down throughout the whole period of human existence before the end of earthly history Christ Jesus separates light from darkness and the light is necessary for life and the darkness is also present in life. Our Lord Jesus Christ is always striving to separate the light from the darkness. Within each one of us, our hearts have to be recreated and by the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord stands without desiring to enter into our hearts to separate light from darkness within each one of us. We must see both the light and the darkness so that we can make a clear choice. A little later <clears throat> we'll hear that men desired darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil, but that the light was in the world and the world could neither comprehend nor overpower it. That light was present, calling upon everyone to allow it to shine into their hearts, to separate the light from the darkness within them, and having separated it, to make it clear what is dark and what is light, and that we could struggle against the darkness to increase the light. And the more filled with light, the divine light that our heart becomes, the more it becomes the kingdom of God, paradise within us, as Christ promised. When our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, two thieves were together with him. We mentioned them before. The two trees in the Garden of Eden, in fact, are a prophecy and type about the cross. Because one thief looked upon Christ on the cross and saw in him the good, and then recognized for the first time his own wickedness. So the cross of Jesus Christ at that moment became the tree of the knowledge of good and evil for this brigand. And when the man said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, the cross of Jesus Christ became the tree of life for him, because Jesus Christ is the fruit of the tree of life the one who can bestow upon us everlasting life. Now, also, on the other side of Christ's cross was a man of equal guilt as the first thief. But he doesn't repent. In fact, he reviles Christ. And then we see that the cross of Jesus Christ becomes a dividing line between light and darkness between the heart that becomes illumined through repentance and the heart that remains in darkness because it will not repent, it will not seek to change, it will not seek to change the way it thinks and the way it acts. So here Christ separates light from darkness visibly before us on the cross and the two thieves are a type of the light and the darkness who stand on either side of the cross and the cross of Jesus Christ truly becomes the dividing line between light and darkness. So we want to see this also flowing throughout our history, the human history, and throughout our own personal history, because the cross of Christ still stands within and before each one of us as light and darkness. The dividing line is there. When Christ created the earth, made it habitable, the grace of the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters, bringing forth life. And there was light in the Garden of Eden. St. John Damascus tells us that the Garden was paradise because it was filled with light. The 
uncreated light of God's glory. And then mankind chose darkness rather than that light and departed into the outer darkness. And Jesus Christ will use that formula sometimes in his parables, cast them forth into the outer darkness where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So <clears throat> if we see the prophecies, we see this reflected in the New Testament, and we see above all that there stand before each of us, just as those who laughed at Noah and those who were on board the ark with him, to choose between light and darkness, between life and death, spiritual life and death, first of all. And we're all called upon daily to open ourselves toward the light and try to root out the darkness that is within us. And our Lord Jesus Christ and the grace of the Holy Spirit are there to help us. Because the light of Christ's love and glory shines into the heart that opens itself toward him. And the grace of the Holy Spirit then fills the heart with the illumination of that glory. The more we struggle to acquire the grace of the Holy Spirit and to unite ourselves with Jesus Christ and to live a life in Christ. But a person can be very religious and still be filled with darkness. Because being religious does not mean necessarily that you have faith. We can be religious to such a degree that we become cruel, destructive, full of hatred for others, full of malice, and convinced that we are absolutely right and the rest of the world is absolutely wrong. And yet, it is never us that are right. It is the church that is right, not us. And so we have to choose, even within the life of the church, our position, whether in light or in darkness, whether to be simply religious or whether to have a living and vital faith and struggle for a life in Jesus Christ. The light and the darkness both stand together until the end. And this is the mystery of paradise in the end, that the light fills everything all in all, that it illumines and gives warmth to the faithful and to those who rejected Christ and those who are brutal toward their fellow human beings or indifferent toward their fellow human beings. That light of Christ's love and glory will burn them like an everlasting fire. Therefore, let us, as we proceed through the Old Testament, consider its meaning and consider the meaning of the separation of light from darkness, even the knowledge of good and evil. And let our lives be consecrated to the struggle to acquire light and cast out the darkness from our own hearts and our own minds. And this means our prejudices, our ill will, our evil feelings toward, feelings toward others. And uh, all of these things that constitute a kind of darkness. This is what the creation narrative begins with, the separation of light from darkness and the begetting of life. And this is how our lives have also to begin to become authentic lives the separation of light from darkness within us, the choosing of light, the struggle to drive out the darkness by increasing the light of the grace of the Holy Spirit and Christ's presence within us. We cannot do this just through religion. We can do it through a living and vital faith in our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and through our struggle to open our hearts to acquire the grace and illumination of the Holy Spirit. And this is one of the things that we're going to talk about time and time again as we travel through the Old Testament and find out what it has to say about each one of us and our life and our struggle and our choices. God bless you all for the uh, coming New Year. Tomorrow will be New Year's Eve. Here at the monastery we'll have the traditional midnight service uh, right at midnight, going into the new year, the thanksgiving for the new year, and perhaps the thanksgiving for having survived the old year, but a joyous new year.